Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria. Lina tusu wananchi wote wa Afrika Mashariki. Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria. Lina tusu jumuiya yote ya Afrika Mashariki. Ziwa Victoria. My name is Francisca Uwar. I'm the National Project Coordinator for LAVEMP in Kenya. Uh, LAVEMP, or rather Lake Victoria Environmental Management Project, is a, a regional project which is uh, implemented by five East African community countries, uh, namely Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. Uh, the project has two objectives, or rather had two objectives. Uh, one is aimed at uh, strengthening uh, collaborative management of the shared natural resources. Uh, the natural resources shared by the East African countries uh, the other one was uh, to contribute to a reduction of environmental stress that is facing Lake Victoria Basin. Uh, the basin has got a number of environmental stresses and those are the issues that were identified in the first phase of uh, Lake Victoria Environmental Management Project. Uh, which uh, were used to design uh, the phase two, which we were we have been implementing since 2009, but effectively commencing 2010. <laughs> some uh, main activities that uh, we implemented in the last seven years, which ranged from uh, institutional capacity for institutions which are responsible for fisheries management and research, so for purposes of managing the transboundary fisheries resources. We have bought uh, procured boats for research and management and given to the user departments. We have also procured uh, boats and the canoes for beach management units so that they can uh, participate in the management of the lake. Over 26 boats have been bought for the communities and uh, two heavy utility ones for research and management. Uh, the boats which have been procured have been used for gathering data and information that has been used uh, in the development of frameworks that will guide the management of the fisheries resources. We have uh, an updated fisheries management plan for the region that is going to be domesticated, domesticated at the national level. We also have uh, an EAC fisheries and aquaculture policy that is, uh, has, reached, uh, has, uh, has been approved at the regional level awaiting just adoption at the ESC Secretariat in, uh, in Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, because of the many issues that is affecting the, the fishery, uh, we have a lot of people uh, who are now focusing on the lake for economic reasons, and we have tried to provide alternative livelihoods, especially around the lake shore like uh, diverting into uh, poultry farming, horticulture, uh, tree nurseries, so that people can get some income generating uh, 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 
activities that can support their livelihood so that they move away from the lecture. And uh, we have also tried to improve the facilities at uh, the fish landing sites, such as uh, construction of fish bandas. This one uh, has improved the fish handling. Uh, some of these uh, areas had not, uh, did not have facilities for handling fish. But right now when you go there, at least the consumers have confidence in the products which are coming from the lake. And as you know, uh, our main market for the Nile patch is in the European Union and they are very sensitive on how the fish is handled. We have also provided uh, uh, potable water as well as sanitation facilities uh, for safety and uh, cleanliness at the fish landing sites to avoid uh, contam contamination. Uh, some landing sites have also been provided with uh, uh, access roads because for you to market fish, you need good communication from the beaches to reach the markets and also constructed jetties for, for, for the boats to land and then uh, fish so that uh, it is uh, handled in a proper way. And uh, we have also done capacity for the fisher folk so that uh, they can participate in collaborative management of the fisheries resources. Uh, teaching them about the regulations, the emerging issues. You see now we have things like climate change and how they can also participate in the management of the water hyacinth so that uh, they are part, uh, of the, uh, part of the process of uh, managing the environment where the fish lives. So uh, generally uh, we have uh, worked in collaboration with the county governments uh, such that uh, we don't have gaps uh, between the two levels of government so that each level of government know what are their roles like for example in the implementation of the fisheries management plan uh, where we have now teased out the responsibilities that would have to be undertaken from the grassroots level the bmus up to the county level and then the national level each Section has it. Yeah, we have uh, also uh, supported uh, uh, activities which are related to value addition uh, at the fish landing sites because right now you find that uh, there have been changes in the in the in the in the in the in the quantity of fish that is being landed, such as right now we are having that omena is now dominating the catches, and though it has a low value. We have invested in groups so that they can come up with uh, facilities that can add value, especially the drying process from away from the traditional uh, uh, drying on the grounds. And you will find that uh, Omena, which is dried under value addition, added uh, structures, it fetches more than what is available. From the... From the traditional methods of, of drying. Uh, we have uh, also participated in regional uh, activities supported by the uh, project at the national level and this had to do with the development of uh, frameworks that are supposed to manage the transboundary fishery resources and specifically the fisheries management plan which has been updated and also the development of uh, uh, an EAC fisheries and aquaculture policy. Uh, we have been operating using different tools from the different riparian countries but managing one resource. We are also uh, focusing on uh, establishing sustainable funding mechanisms for investments in the fishery and uh, we now have uh, uh, a law in place, the new Fisheries Act 2016, that has a provision for the establishment of a fish levy trust fund. We have already developed the regulations that will anger the fund into the Act and uh, very soon it will be in operation and we are likely to pilot it for several years from now so that we can generate uh, funds that can complement what is being provided uh, in the 
from the government. And uh, so far we are likely to be the first ones in East Africa to start having that kind of, uh, of fund that will be managed by the stakeholders themselves, the fish farmers, the fishermen, and the fish uh, processors. And the good thing about the fund is that the money would not go to the consolidated fund. So that creates confidence in people who are likely to uh, support or do some contributions. Increasing pressure on the lake fishery, where the catches are now going down. We have also promoted aquaculture, fish farming within the riparian uh, counties. And this one, one, besides providing alternative livelihood, it is also uh, giving production uh, to supplement what is coming from the lakes. So uh, a lot of BMUs have adopted that and they are now having, besides fishermen going to the lake, they also have fish ponds where they can harvest fish for home consumption and also for selling. And we have done a lot of copper on that. And we are not just restricting on the, on the fish farming alone. We also have poultry, we have beekeeping along the shoreline so that uh, the fishermen can change their attitude away from the normal fishing activities that are now uh, uh, contributing to decline in the fish catches so that they move to other options that can reduce the number of people who are going to the main lake. I coordinate the implementation of community development, community-driven development sub-projects in the, in the project. Community-driven development is an approach. The approach is founded on the belief that communities are capable of solving their own local problems if they are given knowledge and uh, enabled in terms of resources. It is the highest level of participation a project can take. It is actually an empowerment to the project. So communities are uh, guided and enabled to identify uh, uh, project activities. And these activities are supposed to be within our project objectives. The community-driven development sub-projects are implemented under component three. Component three of the LEVEMP project, which deals with the watershed management. Under the watershed management, the broad objective is to reduce stress on the lake, Victoria. So the range of activities are um, aimed at reducing pollution to the lake and also reducing um, uh, pressure on the lake fishery resources. So under the community-driven approach, the communities will identify a problem they can relate to within that objective, the broader objective of the watershed management. Then they will be guided to write a project proposal. And uh, once the project proposal has gone through an approval process, it ends up with um, a signed agreement the agreement is signed by the peers on behalf of the government and the group officials on behalf of the group. Then we disburse money in tranches to the group's account. And so the groups manage this money together with their own uh, community contribution, which is at a minimum of 20%. And they put all these resources together and they manage it 
through implementing a project of their choice, which uh, is within the project objective. The project covers seven counties. The five lecture counties of Kisumu, Busia, Homa Bay, Siaya and Migori. And then it has two other um, upper catchment uh, counties of Nandi and um, Kericho. We have a total of five, uh, 247 uh, community groups that have implemented projects across these seven counties. The distribution is as follows. Kisumu County, 60 groups. Migori County, 21 groups. Homa Bay County, 51 groups. Siaya County, 31 groups. Busia County, 22 groups. Kericho County, 29 groups. And Nandi County, 33 groups. Together we have implemented 251 sub-projects through these groups because four groups successfully completed their agreements and then they made requests for the project to finance another objective for the groups. So the four were considered as new agreements. And so the total number of sub-projects that we have implemented through this approach add up to 251. The range of activities are um, very long because we are not restricting the, the, the communities as long as the activity they are proposing lies within our objective of conserving the environment and uh, improving livelihoods. So under the environmental conservation, we have done a lot of tree planting. We have improved sanitation along the, the lake shore especially by building uh, fish handling facilities, modern fish banders, and uh, sanitation for the fisher folk. Um, under the livelihood conserv uh, improvement, the range of activities has included uh, dairy farming, poultry production, uh, beekeeping, horticulture, among many others. And we have very many success stories to mention, but a few shining examples. One of the best uh, managed tree nursery is run by a group called Rural Organization for a Just Environment, that is Roje. The group has been around for uh, coming now to four years and it has an annual production of uh, 300,000 seedlings. The group has 16 members. These 16 members consider this a full employment for themselves. And they are a very enthusiastic uh, group of community members if one has time to visit. Under the poultry improvement, one of the best groups is Chuodo Women Group. It's in Migori. The group started poultry keeping with a flock of 600 birds. And uh, as at um, October this year, the group has sold in excess of 4,000 birds, and it is expanding its membership to include the whole sub-county. It has a view to developing to a level of a cooperative. Uh, in terms of fish banders, uh, one of the best fish bander you, is at uh, Magare, Magare Beach, which has a modern fish bander installed with the solar-powered freezers, which make them hold on to their fish catches 
uh, for some time as they try to find a better market. Dairy farming, there are quite a number of groups. Uh, we have Upper North Kabodo Women Group with, uh, with the 10 heifers that all of them have calved uh, three times with an average production of uh, 10 liters per day per cow. And the women are very happy. They feel really empowered. They make a lot of money from the sale of milk. Uh, several uh, groups have grown a lot of trees in bare, uh, along rivers. They have developed um, woodlots and some of the trees are, uh, are almost maturing. They are almost uh, about to start harvesting some of these groups. So the project has had a lot of impact, quite some impact. And I don't want to forget one, another uh, uh, very successful group, which is um, Nyakonya CBO. This group, from a background of a lot of uh, erosion, and a lot of uh, waterborne diseases. They decided to start supplying um, treated water, clean water to the surrounding community. The project supported the group to establish a water bottling plant, which is uh, in operation. The group uh, makes um, about 120 bells of water per day and they have no problems with market and they are selling and from the sales this group is supporting 20 orphaned and uh, vulnerable children from the proceeds of the sales of the, the water so they bottle water to sell um, for, for the markets uh, away from the point of bottling but at the point of bottling, they also sell water in jerry cans, the same treated water. And uh, the, the, some impact is being realized in terms of reducing um, waterborne diseases. The last group that I want to talk about is the Women in Modern Agriculture, which is a women group in Siaya. This group has demonstrated that it is possible to derive a livelihood away from the lake fishery resources. The group was supported with the four greenhouses and enough resources to establish a mango orchard. From the four greenhouses, the group has been able to purchase another extra greenhouse and uh, made sales in excess of two million shillings and they are now in the process of acquiring the land on which the mango orchard and the greenhouses are established. specialist in the project uh, and this one being an environmental project basically we are trying to reduce the stress uh, in the Lake Victoria being the second freshwater lake so we have uh, implemented several uh, projects so basically the main activities that we've done uh, in the project uh, in the catchment is rehabilitation of the wetlands and uh, as you know wetlands basically uh, are the source of water but, uh, that uh, feeds our rivers, it has a lot of uh, functions, uh, provision of, uh, is an ecosystem that pro uh, provides habitat for both uh, 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 flora and fauna. 
So basically as a project, Livem2 project, I will be able to uh, restore and reclaim, I do a lot of reclamation in the four wetlands. Uh, the first one is uh, we have uh, Kibirong wetland it's, uh, in Nandi County. We have the second one also in Nandi, it's called Kingwal wetland. We have another one in Kiricho, it's called Tinosoyet wetland. And then uh, the fourth one is Nombe wetland in Kisumu County. So basically the uh, activities that we've been able to, take, to undertake in the wetlands is um, one, we've been trying to rehabilitate and increase uh, the vegetation cover in the wetlands by, uh, through planting of uh, trees and this includes mostly the indigenous trees. We've also done a lot of bamboo planting, uh, having in mind that bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants in the wetlands. So uh, we've been able to do over 20,000 uh, seedlings, uh, planting over 20,000 bamboo seedlings. We've also done over 8,000 indigenous seedlings in the wetlands. So basically we try to divide uh, uh, depending on the availability of space. And also, you know very well that uh, on environmental conservation, you cannot do uh, environmental conservation without looking at the uh, livelihoods. So basically, we know that an angry uh, person cannot be able to conserve the environment. So what we've done, we've done a lot of uh, uh, livelihood improvement through provisional of income generating activities. And this includes uh, being able to provide beehives to these uh, wetland communities. Uh, they have installed the beehives, in fact they have already harvested and also we were able to procure harvesting kits for the wetlands communities. So that one is one of the income generating activities that is going a long way in reducing the pressure on the wetlands. The other thing we've done, uh, we've also uh, been able to construct and equip and stock uh, eight fish ponds, two per, per wetland. Uh, so they are fully stocked and uh, with, we gave them around 1,000 fingerlings, so we are expecting a very good harvest from that. Then also, uh, we've been able to support other communities through a lot of education and awareness. We are, uh, we've taken them to various courses, entrepreneurship uh, courses, uh, um, management courses, so that they are able to uh, be able to know and support themselves uh, in their livelihood adventures. Uh, thirdly, there is an activity that uh, we were able to undertake and I think uh, this one has really given uh, the project a, a lot of credit. We were able to, through awareness, uh, uh, through awareness, uh, to doing a lot of awareness, we were able to talk to the community and they agreed to fence uh, the, the wetland. Basically we, were, we had set some funds for fencing the four wetlands. Uh, we were able to start with uh, to phase one of the wetlands. That wetland is around uh, 1,046 acres. So basically we've been able to fence part of it around, uh, we've been able to cover 5,064 kilometers in the wetland. And that one has really increased uh, the growth or the regeneration of the, the wetland. Basically, uh, a target, we had a target of around 300 hectares, uh, but to date we have done 500 hectares. Because since once a wetland is fenced, we don't even have to intervene through tree planting. The general generation takes uh, takes on, and the other threat is uh, it grows very fast. So the other thing, like uh, after the generation of the papyrus in the wetlands, uh, the community, the reception, they were able to uh, they are they're able now to have a lot of knowledge, and these are also a lot of changes have has been witnessed on the, uh, the, what we get, the water quality from the wetlands, and also a lot of issues have at least changed. But even for the community, they don't know what they have, but they, they do the activities that they are taking. So all the whatever we are doing, the interventions we are, we are doing, were informed by the management plans that were developed. So we had developed, uh, initially before we started the uh, implementation of the activities, we had developed uh, through a participatory process with the community for management plans for each wetland. So these are the uh, these are the things that inform because in a management plan there is an implementation matrix where we have uh, some activities that can be take, undertaken very uh, low line fields. So those are the activities that we are able to fund as a project. So already we have in place four management plans. Uh, so that those are the ones that informed uh, the activities, and these were done by basically by the community. So we were not like the top down approach; it was an up, uh, uh, bottom up approach. 
they, were, they, they identified the activities. So these activities, all of them that we have uh, implemented, are basically from the community themselves. Uh, the other thing, as on top of that, we've been able to, through the same process, but parallel process, been able to come up with two other management plans. Uh, one for, there's a wetland in uh, Kericho called Kuje, locally known as Kuche wetland, is in Sigoet sub-county, and also another one in Homa Bay, it's called Ondago wetland. Uh, those, the management plans are ready, it was done participatory, with a lot of uh, uh, participation from the local community, the wetland community, we had the national government as well as the county government. So these are a very good activity. This one will go a long way uh, in also uh, uh, enabling the community to sustainably get a lot of uh, a lot of benefits from the wetland and also sustain the wetlands. So those are the, the two management plans. We have the activities that have been identified by the communities and we are hoping that uh, during the next phase uh, the, the, the project can take off some activity but also the same these are resource mobilization tool once you have a management plan that is a you can you, it's like a proposal you can take it to any other donor for you to be funded so basically that's what we've done for the wetlands and also the other thing that i'm charged with is the issue of compliance uh, for these wetlands to be conserved we have to ensure that we really abide by the or the, the country's environmental laws as Environmental Management and Coordination Act, uh, Act of three and uh, Cap 385, and also we have the World Bank policies that are supposed to be adhered. And this one being a, a basically an environmental project, there is no activity that has some negative impacts on the environment that uh, is not subjected. All of the activities have to be subjected to normal uh, environmental regulations, both for the country and also the World Bank, uh, World Bank uh, Environmental Policies. Event two, as uh, it has been mentioned, uh, uh, it has got two objectives. W the first objective is to contribute to improvement uh, of collaborative management of transboundary natural resources among the partner states. The second objective of the project is to contribute to the improvement of environmental management of targeted pollution hotspots and selected uh, degraded subcatchments within the basin for the benefit of the target communities. So those are the major, the two objectives of the Livem2 Kenya. As monitoring and evaluation officer, I have a number of responsibilities that have been performing within the project. It is to do the coordination of m, &M and where uh, I do uh, now coordinate the coordination of m and within uh, those places I'm talking about, within sub-county and even within the, among the members of the community who are implementing a number of activities. Uh, besides that, uh, I also carry out uh, monitoring and evaluation of the project activities within the project area. And uh, I also uh, fast track uh, uh, the, the, the progress achieved uh, out of the, the project uh, resource framework. We have got a number of uh, results, uh, I mean the, the performance indicators that we use for measuring performance of the various project uh, activities. And uh, I do update the targets of those indicators over time so that we can be able to know or capture the progress that is being uh, realized uh, by, the, by the project. Uh, my mandate as a monitoring and evaluation officer has assisted the project uh, to realize its uh, objectives. Uh, let me say that uh, through M&E, 
the project has been able to report adequately on its achievements. Uh, as we talk right now, as we head towards completion of the project, the project has been able to achieve about 90% of the planned activities over the period it has been on uh, under implementation. That's about eight years. So up to now, uh, we have been able to realize uh, 80%, and uh, this figure has been realized through the, mo the continuous monitoring and evaluation activities that I coordinate, including those other players or those other people who participate in doing M&D for the, for the project. Uh, through M&D, we have also been able to know what level we are. I've talked about the two project uh, objectives, and these two objectives have been achieved through the implementation of the previous uh, uh, various project activities. And uh, maybe I can mention this quickly, uh, starting from the first component all the way up to the end of the project, uh, end of the project, uh, uh, up to the end of the uh, up to the end of the project component. Uh, the, the, up to the last component of the project. Now, the first component is what we call uh, a strengthening institutional, managing an institutional, uh, strengthening, uh, 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 managing, uh, strengthening an institutional capacity to manage uh, shared uh, resources, mainly water and fisheries. Within this uh, component, we have been able to realize quite a number of uh, uh, achievements and the first one is uh, real harmonization of policies um, uh, both in water and uh, fisheries resources. We have also been able to to undertake a number of uh, fish stock assessment or surveys and out of the data that has been uh, uh, captured and the reports that have been prepared out of these surveys has been able to inform us in the preparation of fisheries policy and uh, also the water uh, <laughs> policy that I've just talk, talked about. Uh, we have also been able to undertake uh, 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 various uh, uh, monitoring under what uh, we are calling uh, uh, ecosystem monitoring and applied research. We have undertaken a number of uh, monitoring under that uh, subcomponent. And out of this, I've realized, I've been realized through the activities that are undertaken, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that are monitored uh, through M&D uh, section. Under component two, which is uh, uh, point source pollution and prevention, we have uh, done a lot of uh, activities and realized a number of achievements, which includes implementation of sewerage facilities, bio toilets, uh, among other interventions that, that we have realized, and these ones have been reported effectively through M&D activities. The third component is uh, watershed management, where we have uh, uh, done activity to do with the tree planting. Uh, we have also done soil and water conservation activities. We have undertaken CDD-led activities where we have involved the members of the community. All these uh, achievements have been realized and we have been able to report them uh, adequately through M&D uh, 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 section or as, 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 as a component of the, of the project. So basically, uh, and out of this, now we can be able to say that uh, the project has been able to achieve its objective and this is well reflected in the reports that have been uh, prepared by the M and A uh, uh, section. I'm in charge of tree planting, that is coordinating tree planting activities within the project area. And uh, we have done, we have achieved quite a bit uh, because we have done tree planting on bare hills, we have done tree planting along river lines and on farmlands. And on uh, bare hills, if we start with bare hills, we have done, uh, we have concentrated on three 
Uh, one is Kajuru Hills in Kisumu County. One is uh, Chepkwina in Nandi. One is uh, Lemotit in uh, Kerisho. And in total, we have done like a thousand hectares of trees. And we have used all species. We have used both indigenous species. We have um, uh, exotic species. And the indigenous species include also bamboo. Also, we also, we also have some exotic baboos. And uh, out of the 1,000 hectares, the survival or the survival is quite good. Many trees are now growing on the hilltops. And this has the effect of reducing erosion, increasing a tree cover. And the reduced erosion, the reduced land off also helps to improve the, the soil fertility within the farmlands thereby improving the crop productivity of those farms. So, uh, in additionally, within the whole project area, we've got CDDs, and majority of the CDDs have got a tree planting component. Either they have tree nurseries, or that is producing tree seedlings, or they have a tree planting component. That is, they get seedlings from somewhere and plant, either as wood rods, or around the beaches, and so on and so forth. Now, um, the CDDs themselves have done approximately 2,000 hectares, again using all species, both indigenous and exotics. Babu, um, use, uh, 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 eucalyptus, and other indigenous species, and the survival is quite good. So in total, the, the Laven project has achieved uh, more than 3,000 hectares, both on the bare hilltops, around the river lines, and within the farmlands. That's quite a bit and it's significant. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the tree cover within the Rickshaw counties, that is from Busia, Siaya, Kisumu, uh, Homabe, and Migori, the tree cover is still very low. It's approximated to be less than 4%, while the Kenyan constitution calls for all rad to be under 10% tree cover. So the job is not yet done. We still have uh, quite some some way to go. And we are planning that in the next coming phase, we will improve the tree planting, the tree growing, so that we get, the, especially those lakeshore counties, to improve the tree cover to the 10% minimum under trees. Again, we will use all species, both indigenous, exotics, and so on. Now, uh, in addition, uh, all CDDs now have quite a bit of uh, tree income generation from trees, that is either by selling uh, seedlings that they produce. And these seedlings, we have some groups which are very, very successful, like Roger, which makes uh, millions of shillings from selling tree seedlings. And again, this also helps to, to increase the tree cover because the, those seedlings are again planted within the project area, mostly within the project area. So livelihood uh, has improved. And uh, once the farmers also plant the trees within their farmlands, then also their crops they are, perform better because the, the trees and, and because the soil fertility is uh, improved. And again also, uh, the way we have uh, stabilized the, the, the river banks, this has helped to to stabilize the river banks and there is less pollution going into the lake which is again another of, of our main uh, activities so we have reduced the, the erosion going to the into the lake and stabilize the river banks so uh, we will continue the, the job is not yet done and uh, not the, there is no one in, uh, institution which will be able to deliver all the tree planting required. So we will work with all stakeholders to increase to increase the tree, tree planting so that we get the tree, uh, tree cover to go to where it's supposed to go. We work, like I said, with many, many stakeholders. We have uh, different stakeholders like Kenya Forest Service. We have different line ministries. We have the communities. And we all work together to improve uh, the tree growing in, within the the within the farmlands, but uh, we have also faced quite a bit of challenges, especially where we have the low tree cover. 
Rotary, Rotary cover counties because uh, we get that many of the farmers after they harvest their crops, they have planted trees within the, 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 tree, the crop growing season. But many of them, after they harvest the crops, they release cows to do free raging. That way the cows or their livestock helps, uh, unfortunately destroys many of the trees. So we are tr encouraging and trying to get the farmers to, to really protect the trees, seedlings that they plant within the, the crop growing season by not uh, having free raging animals so that the tree, trees that seedlings that were planted uh, grow into, into bigger seedlings or, or into bigger trees. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, on the bare hilltops, uh, we, we, we encouraged also whatever was growing there as trees, the, the, the indigenous things which were growing there, we did not cut them and uh, so that so as to plant new new tree seedlings, but we encouraged the, them to grow into that is we protected them so that they continue growing into big trees and we have achieved significant uh, success in that so that you will get on the hilltops there are those that we have planted as a project and those that we have protected to grow on their own and this has led even to increased uh, water flows eh, from from the from the springs originating from those hilltops. So uh, it, the, the job is not yet done, but we are working with all, all people together. We will, uh, we will achieve more. As the agriculture specialist, I'm involved in quite a number of activities that are geared towards contributing to the achievement of the objective of the project, of which one of the objective is to reduce environmental stress in targeted pollution hotspots uh, for the benefit of uh, the communities who depend on these uh, natural resources and also improve on their livelihoods. Now, another challenge that we've been having uh, and is being addressed by the project is that relationship between the catchment or the farmers and water hyacinth. Because uh, water hyacinth is a manifestation of another problem. Uh, and the problem here is pollution of the lake. And the lake is being polluted by many things. I won't mention the others, but I'll mention nutrients and sediments. So uh, in the project, in its effort to try and address the water hyacinth problem, uh, we developed a strategy. In fact, it's a regional strategy covering the five EAC partner states. And uh, the strategy uh, is the guiding document to all the five EAC partner states in managing water hyacinth. Uh, the strategy is very clear about what needs to be done, uh, data collection, um, uh, surveillance of the of water hyacinth for interventions or for control measures to be able to be undertaken. Surveillance monitoring and control strategy uh, advocates for biological control of water hyacinth, appreciating the fact that uh, uh, water hyacinth is an invasive species and it's not, we cannot be able to eradicate it, but you can just control it. But also, the strategy advocates for manual removal and mechanical removal. Manual removal through efforts of uh, the beach management units, keeping their beaches clean for those small quantities of water hyacinth as they are being washed uh, onto the beach, the same way that we keep our compounds or our uh, our paths back in the village clean, the same way we were the strategy advocates for keeping our beaches free of water hyacinth as 
it comes about. When you go to the beaches or some areas in the neighborhood of the beaches, you find that uh, we have what I have seen in the fringes of, uh, of the lake. Those small quantities or amounts of water hyacinth are the ones that uh, the strategy advocates for manual removal. But also, the strategy appreciates the fact that uh, in a large water body, like uh, in our case here in Kisumu, uh, we need to undertake a mechanical removal of water hyacinth, especially when it is in high, high amounts or high hectare. And the project appreciated that and uh, made efforts to procure uh, water hyacinth our water hyacinth mechanical removal equipment. We, uh, we appreciate the fact that disposing of this water hyacinth needs to be done in, a, in an environmentally friendly manner and we identified 18 sites for disposing the water hyacinth so that it's not washed back to the lake, uh, so that it can decompose and whatever material is left behind can be used for not farming because we don't know the chemical composition but maybe rehabilitating areas through tree planting and uh, uh, and the like. We also procured some two lorries for transporting the harvested uh, water hyacinth to the disposal sites. Um, uh, the procurement of the water hyacinth harvester is uh, yet to be concluded. It's work, it's, uh, work in progress and uh, we are hoping that we shall be able to to kickstart the mechanical removal of water hyacinth. But we're also saying that water hyacinth management is not something that can be left to one person. We need all stakeholders to participate uh, in their own big way or in their own small way. And uh, what we have been able to do as a project is uh, what I would say uh, is the contribution of the project and the contribution of the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources in the management uh, uh, of water hyacinth. So what we are saying, bottom line, is that it takes the effort of everyone, the national government, the county government, the investors that we have in the beaches, or, or rather along the lake, be they factories, hotels, um, transporters. It should be the responsibility of everybody to see that we keep the lake clean and free of what has seen. Thank you. Basically, my role is the financial management, um, the one in charge of financial management, and my work is to facilitate the implementation of the activities, the intervention the project has been assigned to carry out, um, including facilitating and making sure that the sound financial management uh, processes, systems, and ensuring that uh, the funds have been used for the intended purpose. Was uh, funded to a tune of $30 million. The funding coming from uh, World Bank and some counterpart funds from the government of Kenya. Uh, that so far was from uh, the initial credit of the project, the credit we call Credit 4532. And later we got some extension. Uh, we had two years co no cost extension, and we also had uh, an extension with an additional financing of uh, 10, mil of, uh, 10 million dollars. So in total we had a funding of 40 million dollars from IDA World Bank. The rest of the amount was coming from the uh, government of Kenya. Uh, the projects so far have absorbed 99.97% of the initial credit, which was the $30 million. And we have also absorbed about 80% of the additional financing, the $10 million. The project has achieved tremendous, tremendous achievements 
out there quite a number of investments tangible investments out there so many lives have been touched so many lives have been improved for example if i mention a few we have done uh, interventions and investments towards the direction of uh, sanitation facilities in order to control both point and non-point pollution sources. So we have done sewerage facilities. We have done sewerage facilities. We have expanded the existing facility in Kisumu to be able to accommodate more effluent. Uh, we have done, we have rehabilitated Homa Bay and we have actually constructed a new facility in Bomet. The facility, the expansion of the facility in Kisumu costed us about 135 million. The first phase of, Le uh, of, of Bomet, not Bomet, Homa Bay, costed us about 215 million. And we are doing now, currently we are just completing the second phase. And the first phase of construction in Bomet costed us at 130 million. So those are very huge investments, tangible investments, that are controlling or both urban waste or treating urban waste before they are dis discharged to the water bodies and even the industrial wastes. We have funded over 247 community driven developments cutting across seven, six to seven counties all the way from Megori. We have done it in Homa Bay County, Siaya County, Busia, Kisumu, Nandi, and even Kericho. The total 247 community groups and associations, we have funded them to a tune of over 630 million Kenya shillings. And these investments in the communities have changed a lot of lives. They have done the environmental interventions at the community level, doing pre-planting, spring protections, farm contours, and so many things. Beyond that, it has also improved their lives. They are now into horticulture, dairy farming, beekeeping, fish farming and aquaculture, and many of those enterprises that have really touched their lives. So practically level two, Kenya, I can attest to it that it has improved so many lives. It has changed so much. It has reduced the environmental stress. The impact is huge and can be seen. The impact is tangible. I might say, I must congratulate the team, the National Project Coordination Team, the, uh, the ministry, the focal point ministry, Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources and the State Department of Environment to ensure that this project is a success. I must confirm to you that it's true, this project it's a flagship project in this country. sector I deal with the water and sanitation issues. We have done some facilities which were geared towards uh, improving the environment or safeguard the environment. These include uh, rehabilitation and construction of uh, sewer facilities. We have, construct we have uh, constructed BOMET sewer facility which is new in a 
after after uh, after construction we did also expansion of the same facility which is now geared towards serving about 10,000 people in that town we have also done expansion of Kisumu wastewater treatment plant that is Kisat which is also serving about 32,000 people of this town this town Kisumu and uh, that one can attest to itself because uh, people who had who visited this place earlier they could even feel the smell as far as uh, Kisumu airport but these days when you alight there even when you are passing Kisumu Kisat region you will not notice any smell that is a manifestation of uh, achievement which is done through Livem 2 by expanding that facility and during our, our expansion we did uh, three u seven units we did uh, uh, we did uh, a treatment chamber that is the sludge digestion tank which is a very big one we also did primary digestion secondary digestion and trickle filter all these ones are improving the treatment of a wastewater facility in uh, Kisumu and even if now somebody can go and talk to people in Kisat they can attest to what they have achieved through the VEMP that one even uh, improved their revenue collection so far and the people are, be are now be uh, benefiting are also many we also moved to another town within the within the lake that is homa bay homa bay collapsed that sewer system collapsed before we started uh, rehabilitation so bef in uh, before 2014 the whole sewer from Homa Bay town was going direct to the lake. After that, Levem 2 took the, the work of rehabilitation and we rehabilitated that system and now it is functional. After the rehabilitation, we, we extended again with expansion, which has also been completed. And as we talk now, in Homa Bay town, the water and sanitation company, they are now getting over 800,000 from sewer, sewer alone. And earlier they were getting 25,000. So you can imagine from 25,000 they were collecting from people to over 800,000 from Siwa. That is big, a big achievement which has been done on that side. So because we really geared towards uh, improving environment, in the same, same sector we were also doing uh, bio-toilet facilities. These bio-toilet facilities were targeting schools, uh, market centers, and also pitch management units and so far we have done 40 which is now completed they are fitted with the water system and also bus gunners so we expect by the end of the day in six months to come these schools are going now to start uh, using the gas from these bio toilets to cook like one of the schools we were told the gas has started coming out that is kagoro girls secondary school the gas is now coming out and we are also fitting now the banner in that school so it is going to help the school in double one side the reduction of wood fuel which is used in the school is going to be reduced because now the school will be using the the, the gas generated through bio, uh, the biogas system they are going now to use less fuel in all those school the sludge which is produced also from that uh, facility is also going to be used for uh, to fertilize the vegetables, the trees, and even the flowers. And even that water there, when you water, when they use it to water even vegetables, it is not harmful. It is also going to help the schools. So that bio toilet facility has a lot of benefit, and we are we are even encouraging individuals who can afford to embark on that because once you embark on that you are going to reduce the wood fuel you are going to generate gas to use and it is also you are going to end up using uh, organic manure which is now the best in the world besides that we have also been uh, buying exhausters because we know most of the schools or some of the areas are not covered with the sewer facilities and to help these people to curb environmental disasters that uh, leasing everything to the environment, we have been procuring exhausters. 
And as we talk now, we have procured 12 exhausters, which we have also distributed to water and sanitation companies within the region. Like Oma Bay is serving one, Kericho we have given two, Bomet we have given one, Nandi we have given one, Kisumo we gave two, Siaya we gave two, Busia we gave two. So we have a total of 12 exhausters. And the main purpose of this is for on-site sanitation facilities. Those people who are using pit latrines and those who are using uh, septic tanks. To avoid this uh, pit latrine and septic tank overflowing and ending in the streams and uh, eventually to the lake, we are encouraging exhaustion services to these ones, to the designated sewer facility areas. And those ones are being used very well. Then another thing we have done within the sector, which is also positive, we have also tried to protect springs. And as we talk now, there's a spring which protected uh, successfully, and we provided water for animals and also for the community. So the communities are now benefiting out of those. And uh, when you protect a spring, it is not only to provide that, it is also geared towards looking into the soil degradation. Because when animals walk towards the streams, they cause a lot of soil erosion and degrading the riverbank. So when these animals can be restricted, where they are getting their water, like when you, sp you protect the spring, then that one also is uh, helping in soil conservation. We have, done, we have done a number of roof harvesting, particularly in schools and in health centers. These are now providing safe, clean water to these pupils. And you know, it is helping a lot. And now we have really, the impact is quite great. The water from the roof harvesting, they're using to clean their classrooms. They're using for drinking. They're using even uh, schools which are having a school feeding program. They're now getting water within the school to prepare food for the children. <laughs> I'm Anton Seisaura, the County Director of Environment in Kisumu, working with the National Environment Management Authority, an authority that's charged with the supervising and coordinating all the matters that are touching on environment and implementing the policies there too. As regards uh, LIBEM2 uh, structure, structural organization when it came to implementation of the project, the current directors of environment were nominated as part of the document to be the chairman or the overall coordinators when it came to improve, uh, project implementation at the district and later on at the county levels. These sectors in livestock, fisheries, natural resource, environment, uh, fisheries and water, so that those projects were in line with the set standards, both National and World Bank, when it comes to the implementation as regards the law, the laws and the safeguards. One, we were to do the project appraisals to ensure that the projects that will be under the project shall also attain the main objective of livelihood improvement and environmental conservation. There are minimum threshold in these counties. Two, as a technical team, we were to do the park stopping, capacity building. If it's a matter of fisheries, if it's a matter of environment, and if it's a matter of livestock, like that. Then three, we are to ensure that they have the basic tools of management. That is both financial management, group dynamics, social dynamics, so that the project could be implemented in a smooth manner. 
looking at the projects that were initiated and the ones that we did this permission, they run from water and sanitation and natural resources. Count like Bomet, Kisumu, and Homa Bay, they had the benefit of the improvement in the sewage sector. We had also others that also improved in sanitation, that was Kisi, Kericho, Kisumu, they also benefited from biotoilets. We have also counties that are also in the, the lake shore. The beach management, management units also improved and benefited on sanitary facilities. We also saw improvement in the natural resource management, that is improvement in the free cover as well as forest cover, and also rehabilitation of degraded areas. I would say that uh, in to my also as a uh, 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 district project coordinating teams as well as account project coordinating teams, the NPCT uh, facilitated our working environment to ensure that we have a smooth working environment. We had the first ones who were called in the project, the Nyando Basin uh, based counties or districts. That's Kericho, um, Nandi, Nyando, and Kisumu. They were facilitated uh, with vehicles, uh, double cups, which also made the work easier. While for the offshore uh, districts or counties like Busia, Siaya, Homa Bay, Kisumu West, uh, Migori, they were also facilitated with the motorbikes, which were very effective to ensure that it improves the mobility. There were other uh, support services that they received when it comes to facilitation, when it comes to movement, when it comes to office, uh, office management and stationery, and also facilitation when it comes to meetings to ensure that uh, they were to keep watch uh, on the project uh, and see how best it moves. Also the same was seen during the monitoring that they uh, saw uh, the project uh, beneficiary also uh, giving a push to see that uh, they will meet uh, the time frame and the timelines as such, and also to ensure that uh, they keep to the uh, set standards uh, as regards our Kenyan laws and as well as the World Bank uh, projects. These such projects also had a success. So in, in general, as a unit where we are chairing, we shall say that uh, this is one of the projects that needs upscaling because the, the basic communities in the, catchment, in the catchment benefited from the project and we have seen the level of improve. We have seen the status of the environment improve, the status of the roads, the status of the rivers, as well as the status of the forest cover. Also, the community under this project initial stages, we had the water license removal, where the sites also had been identified and earmarked, and it was also done by the communities. In the same time, they also received uh, uh, a livelihood improvement through pay, at the same time, they reduced the water license cover when it comes to the lake and the only fresh lake water that we have uh, in Africa and the second one in the world. So I'll say that uh, it's our prayer that uh, next time we shall have this such a project also at a higher magnitude so that we can reach a wider community who can also benefit from the same. My name is Ospita Aching Mumbo. I'm a field assistant for LIVEMP2. I'm amongst uh, seven field assistants. We also have other project uh, support assistants who are based in the office, around five. Uh, the field assistants are attached at uh, the different uh, offices where we have the chair of the county project coordinating units and it is uh, headed by the county director of environment, NEMA. So our working stations are based at uh, the counties.
Basically, our duties as field assistants is to fast track implementation of uh, CDD groups, community development uh, sub projects. Our role is uh, more of uh, a supporting role. We groups are supported to implement uh, both environmental and livelihood improvement activities, and uh, groups are at different levels of implementation. So our main role is to capacity build community groups. Maybe groups have uh, different challenges, are faced with varied challenges of capacity, be it in financial management, be it technical issues. Our role basically is to ensure that these groups achieve their targets and these targets are met uh, at the scheduled time. Working with LeVamp has enabled us as capacity builders in very many areas. Working with LeVamp, most of us as field assistants, uh, especially our background is more of a natural resource. Most of us have done uh, environment courses. Most of us have, are, uh, our background is basically in natural resource management. So working with LeVamp, you realize it has uh, capacity builders to be able to have a lot of financial literacy that we can be able to even support these groups because groups are given grants and they're supposed to account for them and it's our role to ensure that whatever they document is according to the set guidelines and groups are there to the set guidelines. Uh, working with LeVamp for the period I've worked with LeVamp, I uh, can say I've been capacity built individually. I have gotten opportunities to attend uh, workshops, both technical workshops. Uh, I've gotten opportunity to attend uh, budget uh, reviewing and planning. And to me, I would say that this is uh, enough capacity building. Working with LeVamp has also taught me management because we are working with groups. And uh, for example, I'm working with 60 groups in Kisumu County. And uh, from time to time, the issues that crop up and you're supposed to provide guidance, you're supposed to provide a way forward, you're supposed to report these issues in a timely manner. So I would say the management aspect has been impacted into us. So I am grateful to LeVamp too. And I would also want to encourage people out there who would want to seek opportunity with LeVamp too to try their luck. Uh, I joined LeVamp in 2009, where we were taken through uh, public participation to are being done uh, under the supervision of the county environment officers of the, the particular clusters. After that, you were taken also in a uh, public participation second round, of which now LeVemp started funding groups in 2013. Uh, from my cluster, I have 33 groups which were funded by LeVemp. Uh, my work particularly was to mobilize them for the uh, trainings of financial management, which they were to undergo before being funded. This is uh, financial management, procurement, and uh, what we call the what is this uh, conflict management. Uh, out of the 33 groups in my cluster, Nandi, uh, they have prospered ahead. I have groups like Kunderit, Kiptemogoi, who are now reaping harvest of what Levemp has uh, funded them. Like Kunderit, they were doing uh, horticulture and uh, environmental protection, of which they have planted woodlots uh, to a tune of uh, 10 acres of land. And they are doing the horticulture, planting tomatoes, vegetables. Uh, they are selling them, getting money, assisting them to pay school fees for their children. Actually, you've learned a lot. I personally, being a CMA, has learned a lot and has achieved a lot and has got so many, uh, has got a lot of uh, experience in various uh, works being done by farmers. <laughs> Under my charge, I coordinate communication issues for the project. And as you know, communication in any given institution is very crucial because it plays a big role in, uh, in, in, in making the institution be known, uh, in the activities of the institution be known, and also it plays a major role for the institution to get the feedbacks of, of its activities. 
In other words, communication links an institution with the outside world, and it is in this regard that the, the, the outside world gets to know what activities and what services the institution offers. This section, therefore, in Livem2 Kenya, uh, it's tasked with the, with, the, with, with, with the project's visibility and the enhancement of the project's image. And in fact, uh, to achieve this feat, the project uh, is guided by a communication strategy which has been put in place. This communication strategy for the project was undertaken in a participatory manner, whereby stakeholders, learning institutions, here we have Masyoni University, we have uh, uh, Eldoret University, uh, we have Moi University, uh, and we have other stakeholders from non-governmental organizations who are within and without the bashing, and experts in communication were brought together to, to consolidate a communication strategy for the project. And in fact, it has been very successful. It has guided the communication requirements of the project since inception and up to date. And in fact, I can say that uh, through uh, various channels, uh, the communication sections have documented environment, uh, have documented environmental and life research. In fact, let me say, have documented the project's activities uh, uh, for, for and disseminated through the various channels. And why have, and this have been always done uh, through uh, media fraternity within the catchment of the project. We have had media excursions. Uh, media excursions, I mean, we have had, uh, we have given the, 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 the media practitioners within the project catchment area and beyond an opportunity to visit our project sites so that they can see for themselves what the, what the project is undertaking so that they have an informed opinion so that they have an informed knowledge of what they are reporting. And we have also taken them through some short trainings of media reporting through organized forums of the existing uh, media organizations within the project so that we built their base in report environmental reporting. This has enabled the project to have uh, an opportunity for the media people to understand the project and make them report positively the, what the project is doing. In fact, we have had social media platforms where most of our activities are being passed on. We have a website where we post, we, we, we post most of our activities for the outside world to see what we are doing and also get the feedback. We, we have YouTube, we have uh, information, education, communication materials, and other publications. We have newsletters, we have brochures, we have fact sheets. We have all these project publications whereby um, most activities that the projects have undertaken are uh, publicated, are, 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 are done, and in fact, most of them are given free of charge, a secreted free of charge to the institutions, to the public, and in such forums where we participate, like the International Trade Fair in Nairobi, uh, that is Nairobi International uh, Trade Fair Show, and the regional show in Kisumu, and, uh, and other county shows where we meet the public, and we, we explain to them, and they see for themselves uh, what the, 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 the project is doing. Apart from this, you know the project is dealing with uh, uh, over 240 community sub-projects, uh, sub and here we document all this, and we take them to, we take these communities to, as you know, the project is covering five East African countries, that's Kenya, Rwanda, uh, Tanzania, Burundi, and Uganda. We, we have exchange visits, and all these are documented. And in fact, uh, uh, there's a program within uh, Levemp states. Levemp says that is the five East African countries Levemp project is existing. And uh, during national days, uh, like tree planting days, like World Environment Day, we rotate in these countries. And during such forums, uh, the project, each country has an opportunity to, to showcase what they have achieved in their project interventions. And in fact, such forums, we have our documentations, which in fact, in Kenya, we have uh, done it through the Department of Film Services, which have really have the professional uh, crew and which is uh, having professional uh, know-how. And in fact, through this, we have been very lucky to in fact document most of, of our activities professionally, 
and has passed the test of time that our, 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 our achievements have all been done in, in a professional way. In fact, as, as I can say, we have, we have a lot of publications uh, that carry the project information. And uh, what I can say, the communication sector in the VEM2 Kenya has been very vibrant. And uh, I can say that I can thank the support of the pressmen within the uh, VEM catchment and all people who have been trained in communication have done a lot to make a documentation of project of 2 Kenya uh, project activities be achieved 100%. And I'm very happy. The cooperation, I hope, as we now go, the, the project now is coming to a close and uh, with the hope of having uh, the third phase. Uh, I believe and I request the same cooperation that the, 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 the press and the communication fraternity had to be extended to phase three, and I think the documentation of phase three activities will be better. <laughs> And I thank all the beneficiaries for doing a good work to achieve what we have achieved. Now we are coming to the close of this project on 31st December 2017, a few days away. And I want to say that a new phase is coming and the preparation process has started. It will take maybe one and a half to two years to get there. I mean to get to phase three. I want to encourage all stakeholders to be vigilant during those one and a half or two years to give their inputs, to give their thoughts, and to give their contributions in shaping the next phase called Phase 3 of the Victoria Environmental Management Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria Linatusu wananchi wote wa Afrika Mashariki Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria Linatusu jumuiya yote wa Afrika Mashariki Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria Dinatusu wananchi wote wa Afrika Mashariki Ziwa Victoria, Ziwa Victoria Dinatusu jumuiya yote wa Afrika Mashariki Tanzania, Uganda na Kenya linatusu 